beloved saints. Um, I'm not going to do the Proverbs today. I have to take my mom to the hospital at 5 a.m. here in a little bit. And um, she's having a biopsy for her lung. They have to do a surgical procedure to get some lung tissue and so forth. So um, I was watching something, and they had a thing on the Cecil Hotel. And I was like, oh, my gosh, the memories I have there. The, uh, before I came home back to the East Coast, I lived all of my adult life in Hollywood. And, I, you know, you know I was successful. And then um, I really went downhill at the very end there. And so I would go to the Cecil and get a hotel for a night or two and just get loaded. I mean, that was what I did. And it was a thing on the hotel of the Cecil Paranormal. And I remember, I was going to share this with you, and I wanted to get it on video before I forget because I had forgotten all about it. But the last night I ever stayed there, like I knew a lot of the dealers there and you know, was partying there with people, and they have no clocks anywhere, and no windows in the lobby and stuff, so you don't know if it's day or night, days will go by, and you'll be strung out, you don't know what's going on, it's just, it's crazy, and I had just rented a room, it was pretty cheap back then, and it was a dangerous place, but right in downtown LA, I just to uh, get off at Pershing Square and walk down there, and I didn't even stay in my room. I like left my most of my purse and everything. I like I locked it up in there, because if I took it with me, when I my head wasn't turned off and found money missing out of my bag, so I left it in the room. And I guess it was six, seven hours later. I was out partying with other people. I went back in my room, and I couldn't get in. The key wasn't working. I was like, "What in the world?" And I was getting ready to go downstairs to try to get in a room. I was like, I don't know. I can't get in my room. And security comes up. And they're like grabbing my arms like I'd done something wrong. I was like, what in the world? I'm trying to get my bag so I can go home. And they're like, no, you can't be in the room. And I was like, what in the world is going on? I haven't been in here all night. The room was trashed. They said the the uh, television door they'd had they had cabinets to close over the television that was ripped off the hinges there was all kinds of loud noises nobody was in that room it was paranormal completely destroyed the room and they wouldn't even let me go in and get my purse an officer went in and got it i was like if you guys have cameras everywhere like you say you know i haven't been in the room i haven't even been here and they know I didn't do it. If they thought I had done it, they'd arrested me. They would have pressed charges. But they knew it wasn't me. It was literally paranormal activity in that building. Now, you know that one girl, uh, Lisa Lamb. There's no way that was an accident. There's no way. And, and I knew that place. And I knew that elevator she was standing in. And I just, I remember my stomach dropping just feeling sick when I saw it. It was like, oh gosh, I've stood right where she's standing. I knew exactly. It's such sick darkness in that place. Just time disappears. You like go into a vortex. You don't know what day it is. I have been there awake from Friday evening until Monday morning without sleep. Not having any idea what day it was. Days would go by. It was insane, and I am so grateful that is not where I am in my life. It would take days for me to recover after doing that to myself. And it was all because when I was successful, it didn't feed me. I was miserable. It was like, so what? Now what? And then I was so spiritually and emotionally bankrupt and traumatized and messed up was so dark and if you look at the history of that place you know Richard Ramirez stayed there another serial killer stayed there it, it it's really just a and what's sad is it's a beautiful art deco like 1920s hotel it's gorgeous but it's it's just hookers and drug addicts and people actually live there and it's just it's a nightmare and I'm just, I look back and I'm so grateful 
I'm not there anymore. I don't know how I'm alive. You know, so matter how bad things can get sometimes, it's like I'm just, I'm not there. I'm, I'm not so empty and hollow that, that I have to do that to myself, that I'd, I'd have to anesthetize myself. But I had forgotten all about it. Something paranormal happened in that room, and it destroyed the room. Noises, thumping, everything was ripped off hinges. It was a mess in there. They knew I hadn't done that. Or they otherwise, they would have, of course, they would have arrested me or something. They knew I wasn't in that room. Or they wouldn't even let me go in the room to get it. I don't know why they won't just admit that stuff's happening. But in any way, I wanted to tell you all that and get it down. And then the other day, the guy I was helping... Uh, the one that was in prison, he was a neighbor in my old neighborhood before it burned down, and he had been out of prison since he was 17. I had some men of God help him. I always, he'd go in and out of prison since he was 17. He's 50 years old. And um, I gave him the gospel one night when he was walking by the old house. And uh, ever since then, I, I've tried to support him. I would send him Bibles every time he's locked up. I'd buy him a new one and send You'd have to buy it from the commissary. And I kept him with food and stuff like that in there the best I could. When you guys, uh, you know, whatever I got from ads or whatever, I would try to support him through that. Um, and we, when he got out this time, I got him a job with, uh, with my brother-in-law and, and helped um, get some money together to do a down payment for a room for him to rent. And he's just really struggling because he's institutionalized. And uh, it's hard. And he's been hearing voices now. And he says, I, I can't understand exactly what they're saying, but they say things like, you know us. You know us. You can hear us, right? And I was like, oh, no. Oh, no. They're trying to destroy him again. They're trying to take him back, you know. And, and so he is seeing a psychiatrist, but I don't think it's necessarily medical. I, I do. So I pray to over him. He seems to be doing better now. And, um, you know, I laid hands on him and prayed over him. And uh, he seems to be doing better. But I'm going to ask you to pray uh, for Thomas. That he find peace and not um, allow the enemy to harass him like that. He's real. I mean, we got a huge dude, like 6'2", built with tears rolling down his face. This spiritual stuff is real, guys. And it's just where my heart is t today. And um, I'll pick back up on the Proverbs. I love sharing like godly wisdom and things that I've learned but I just I wanted to get that out because it, it's something I had suppressed for years I forgot all about that till I saw something on the seesaw I was like they are paranormal and I was like oh my gosh I completely forgot you know you want to forget stuff like that and it was just just crazy but um mom's biopsy is early and I've got to get some sleep um to take her to the hospital for that procedure in the morning. So please keep my mom in prayer too. And I will see you guys uh, the following morning. God bless you. And thanks for being here to listen. Have a great day.